Today we're at the XL London getting ready to attend the Geo Business and Digital Construction Week. This is my first time attending this conference and I'm really excited to see all of the exhibitors and attendees. So let's go ahead and head inside of the exhibit hall. There we go. Just got this. All right, let's take a look. I'm really liking this green carpet. <laughs> it really does just make the entire place pop. So there are two shows happening here. To my left is Geo Business, and then to my right is the Digital Construction Week. Both are very similar, but they do have different sessions and different types of exhibitors, and they differentiate it by changing the color of the carpet from green to blue. So we'll be exploring both sides of the show and talking to all of the companies here on the exhibit floor. So I'm at the Hexagon booth and I'm gonna be playing with their Icon Trade, otherwise known as the ICS50. So this little unit right here has a built-in camera and it's going to be able to track this ball pattern here up top and then I can actually use it to take measurements using the tip down here. All right, so let's see if I can catch it. Oh, there it is. So now it's tracking my motion just like a total station would with a prism. So you can see in the top left there how it's following the ball as I move it, and then the visualization of me moving it. Uh, maybe for that traditional trade person who you know, might not be comfortable using surveying equipment in the past, um, you know, it's designed to be really user friendly, really easy to use, and you know, with all the guided workflows on here, and the visual technology and the visual on the screen, it's very simple to use, it's very nice to measure and capture data. You've got two modes, you can measure mode which is, you know, we can draw this whole booth if we wanted to. If we're really capturing the tables or really capturing the points and we need to, you know, upload this to a CAD drawing, that can be done. We've also got a layout mode, which, um, you know, for setting out on site, maybe drywall linings, maybe MEP installations, the, the pole hopes. Or alternatively, you can actually use the pen. So if I just switch to layout mode and uh, just click layout, all we're doing is simply facing the instrument. So as you can tell, it's visual technology that's telling me that my point that I need to lay out is maybe there. And when I get there, you get a green bullseye and then it's good to store. And like I said, it's really nice because the camera just locks onto the, 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 the V pen. All it needs to see is three of the big spots and it tracks it and it, it you know it's not battery powered it's all 360 tilt measuring to one millimeter accuracy i definitely want to get my hands on this and do some accuracy assessment with it just to see how accurate is this thing but yeah just watching it move around and use the same technology as a total station is quite fascinating Welcome to the DGI stand at Geo Business slash DCW. Uh, it's great to meet you in person, as you know. I mean, you've been on that side of the camera for so long and I've seen you too. No idea who I am. But yeah, these are the DGI toys in the Enterprise range. So I can tell you what you want to look at. We'll start at this side. So this is the, the DGI Dock 3. This is the latest iteration. Um, as you can imagine, its job is to remain in a permanent installed position and then deploy as required. Um, iteration 3 means they've dealt with all of the challenges that might have existed. Everything from snow on the roof to ice forming to it being too windy, they resolved all of those. So now have a fully functional, deployable remote unit. Um, clearly I'm aware of the challenges that exist around deploying it thanks to the CAA. Um, but if you do get the license, this will do the job it needs to do. I know you're interested in this. I mean, this is a DRTK. It's both a GNSS receiver and a repeater. So if you're in a, in a congested area, you've got buildings around, you can place this on a high point and it will allow you to communicate to your drones at greater distances, which is kind of cool. And then in front of the stand is the, the latest Matrice range. So the Matrice 4, Thermal, Enterprise, and we also have available now what they call the Matrice 4D and TD, which is the IP rated drone out of the box. As you know from the Matrice range, latest iteration, full onboard AI thanks to the advanced controller giving you the ability to do things that were unthinkable in previous iterations. In terms of the Matrice range, Matrice 4, there are two drones. You've got the Enterprise range and you've got the Thermal. 
The enterprise range is really around the geographic side, so it's your mapping drone really. Uh, it's got you know, RTK on board, it's going to allow you to capture land masses, it's going to allow you to float around buildings, and actually if you do it automated, it will do it from a metre from the building, which is terrifying to watch it, but it means you get incredible outputs from the camera and the ability to photogrammetry afterwards. So yeah, good, this is basically your mapping geospatial device, your Matrice 4 Thermal, this is more used for detecting people and activity to do with the thermal camera. So, for example, I, I learned recently that if you've got electrical components that are failing, typically they're heating up. So if you're regularly checking them with this or with the dot unit, you'd be able to see that change in temperature and potentially identify problems as they happen. Obviously, the other use of thermal is in the identification of people or uh, animals. So clearly you've got that happening as well. But yeah, different type of camera setup, but more thermally orientated. This has got much higher zoom on the Enterprise. If you want an IP rated version of these, this is now available with this, which is a Matrice for, I don't know how to describe it, whether you call them hard arms or fixed arms, but IP rated. It's the one from the Dock 3. Obviously, it's able to go up in more inclement weather. Uh, this has got the uh, speaker and spotlight on top of it, which is available for these units as well, if you wish. So yeah, all pretty cool, all nice and functional. Okay, I'm here at the surveying stage. Gonna get ready to give my presentation. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. Surveying has been around for a very long time. And so as surveying continues to evolve, how are we preparing the next generation of surveyors? There's a lot of rigorous technology that is impacting our industry. You have drones, laser scanners, geographic information systems, robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, processing data and extracting information autonomously, and surveyors shouldn't be falling behind. Getting equipment in the hands of students is very costly. Many of these programs barely have a budget. They can't afford to bring GNSS receivers and total stations and drones and scanners. So they're depending on the industry to teach these students. So a student goes into a program, comes out with a survey degree, has never touched a GNSS receiver. So there's a lot of missing, you know, hands-on experience that it needs to be supplemented by the industry. Not to mention the high cost of attending some of these programs. This is just rough estimates, but at 120 credit hours, you are looking at the neighborhood of 30 to 100 thousand pounds. This was one my dad struggled with. My dad got his survey degree when he was 48 years old. Why? Because he was a father, he was a crew chief, he was working hard. It's really difficult to find the time to go to school when you are a working adult. It's quite astonishing that the average licensed surveyor in the United States is between the age of 55 and 57. That makes this guy an average surveyor, and it makes me a baby. I created the survey school about a year ago as a means to provide resources and information to students online in a non-traditional setting. There's no pressure that you get at university because it's not you know, a rigorous university program. It's just, here's the information that you're missing that your employer could use, that you could use to grow your skills. And since it's online, it's flexible. You're working, you've got a family, you're traveling. It's at your own pace. Because the biggest thing that we prioritize is our community. You know, I've got a little small drone business, but I really don't understand how GPS works. Well, you're not alone. There's a whole community out there of guys just like you. You're able to go into this program, you're able to talk to them, learn from them, ask questions, give advice, figure out what you want to do, and you could do it in a very relaxed environment. We also do have a classroom with pre-recorded lectures, community posts, so you can ask questions, and the students can interact with each other. We have quizzes and a final exam. And I try to record these lectures like my YouTube videos. I'm out in the field, I'm doing a level loop, doing you know RTK corrections using a basin rover, I show you the settings, I talk about the science, I explain it to you, and it's not just me yapping on about something through a PowerPoint. No, I'm actually out there showing you how to do this. We do traditional boundary surveying. I show you how to do a retracement of a plat, but then I also show you how to bring in geospatial data and extract information from it. We want our students to engage. I mean, hands-on experience, that's kind of the whole point, right? How do you do that online? Those who want to participate will participate. 
It's not forced on you, but if you want to do it, you're going to do it. And so we have students here. Down at the end, we have Bill and looked for a monument. He took a picture with the monument. We have Alan who's doing the pacing challenge. He's trying to see how accurate he can get his pace. We have Abdel here, who's also pointing at a monument that he found. And that's really what we're trying to build here. We're trying to give them the resources they need so they can continue to do their day-to-day -day business, whether they have a business or they're working for someone or if they're actually students at university, but then they also have resources that others don't. And because I've been on YouTube for so long and I have all these partnerships with a lot of companies that are here at the exhibit hall, I'm able to offer resources that universities can't even offer. I'm talking about free software, free hardware. One of our biggest sponsors at the survey school is Imlet. Imlet, the guys that make the GPS units, right? They've sponsored us and Top performing students in the survey school get a free GNSS receiver that they can use and keep and learn from. So they can implement what they've learned in the school in real life. And actually, they didn't give away just one or two. They've given away four GNSS receivers in the last year. Not only that, we have a relationship with a lot of different conferences. This was at Geo Week uh, in Denver, Colorado. And we were able to bring out six students fully funded. Plane ticket, hotel, conference pass, just come network with the industry. A lot of these guys have never been to a conference like this. So it's a really great opportunity for them to be exposed to the industry. I wanna talk about some of the success stories. Alan served 25 years, retired, started a drone business, and wanted to have a better understanding of how GPS control works. Peter came from the VFX world, started his own drone mapping business. Now he's able to actually communicate with surveyors so he can actually have a serious conversation and land contracts with them. Michael left his company and started his own drone business once he started investing into himself because he was running the whole department himself. And now with our community, we can support him and give him all the resources he needs. Hugh is in Canada. He did the same thing. He's a drone mapping business. He just bought a total station, and now he's working with surveyors doing indoor mapping work by setting control indoors. Mark, drone operator in Toronto, same thing. So these guys are all drone oriented. These guys are from the AEC industry. Abdel is a civil engineer who got into the floodplain world, so he does a lot of CAD work himself. Scott is also a civil engineer, has his own business. Alexis is actually from Mexico, uh, and he's an architect, so he does a lot of scan to BIM projects. And then we have Joseph Edwards, who actually just got his professional engineering license and is working towards getting his professional surveying and mapping license in Florida. He just recently gave us a huge project that he's working on, which had no bearings on the plot, just distances. So it was a group exercise that we did together, everyone learned from it, and it was from a real project that he brought to the school. And then the last story I want to tell you about is Chaplain Tim, because this is probably the most unique student that we have. He was homeless at one point, and he's now dedicating his entire life to helping kids that are coming out of foster care. So kids that, you know, may not have had a family growing up, may not have had the best childhood, you know, had a rough time coming up. He started his own nonprofit, and he's teaching himself AEC, serving everything he can to basically pass on that information to these foster children so that they have a better future, so that they don't have to go through the homelessness that he had to go through in his life. We're getting people from all over the world, people from even outside of our industry, and someone like him truly touched all of us because what he was doing you know, for these kids is inspiring. And so I'll end with this. You gotta love AI, right? The survey school is one years old. It's a baby. I think that in the upcoming years, we have a lot of potential. We want to partner with more industry professionals. We want to partner with more manufacturers, software developers, and give students the resources they need to build the future for serving. And thank you guys for listening. <laughs> All right, and that's a wrap for day number one. Be sure to check back in tomorrow for day two here at GeoBusiness 2025.